70 years ago, Dartmoor's unique landscape was designated as one of the UK's first national parks. This is where I come to get away from it all. It's where I work and it gives me my livelihood. It's where I live with my friends and family, like my parents before me. It's a harsh environment, but it's one of the best training areas in the UK. It's where I come to get closer to nature. And I can walk here in the footsteps of generations of people who have been here before me. No matter how you see it, Dartmoor is a special place, protected as a national park for us all to enjoy. But it's not always been protected. In fact, it was once thought of as a wasteland and to the Georgians and Victorians it was somewhere to be improved for agriculture and exploited by industry. Because of this, people became increasingly concerned for Dartmoor's special qualities and the Dartmoor Preservation Association was founded in 1883 to champion Dartmoor for its wildlife and archaeology. But it wasn't until the 30th of October 1951 that Dartmoor was designated as a national park to preserve and enhance its natural beauty and to promote its enjoyment by the public. As more people enjoyed the moor, Devon County Council's Dartmoor Committee appointed the first Head Warden for Dartmoor to help manage and support visitors. Then, following local government reorganisation, Ian Mercer was appointed as the first National Park Officer for Dartmoor. He was an influential and inspiring figure who helped to shape the Dartmoor we all care for today. In 1985, the Dartmoor Commons Act was passed, which established for the first time a legal right of access for walkers and horse riders to Dartmoor's commons, the maintenance of them, and the promotion of proper standards of livestock husbandry. In 1997, further reorganisation saw Dartmoor National Park become a freestanding authority, independent of the County Council, and better able to meet Dartmoor's needs something the Dartmoor Preservation Association had campaigned for from 1951. Over the last 70 years, we have worked to ensure that the distinctive features and qualities that made Dartmoor a national park in 1951 are still recognisable and there for us all to enjoy today. What has changed, though, is the way we think about and balance change in our protected landscapes. We no longer see them just as places to preserve or as isolated sanctuaries for wildlife. Dartmoor is a living, working landscape, and today the National Park Authority's role is to work with everyone to ensure that there is a balance between all our needs so that the National Park thrives. Our National Parks were created so that everyone could get out and enjoy the countryside. And today, the benefits of nature and the landscape for our physical and mental health are increasingly recognised. So it's more important than ever that everyone has the opportunity to enjoy Dartmoor as our natural health service. The National Park Authority manages and maintains and restores a huge network of public rights of way. Those will be public footpaths, public bridleways, and perhaps more recently we've been doing quite a lot of work on enabling people with uh, disabilities or mobility issues to improve their access into the countryside. And out here today we're with a group called the Wheelchair Access Group who are on uh, a, a wonderful track restoration we've done from Princetown to Nuns Cross which enables people to come from an urban centre in the middle of the park right out into the wild countryside. Agriculture has shaped the Dartmoor we love from the first hunter-gatherers to the modern farmer. But hill farming has its challenges. Our role has been to work with and support farmers to ensure the best for the landscape, livelihoods and wildlife, as well as producing some fantastic local food. So welcome to Broadleaf Farm. I am the third generation farmer here. We've been farming for here for about nearly 60 years now. Um, we've been in agreement since the mid 1980s, which was set up by my father and grandfather. Ever since then, we have been farming very much um, with the environment in mind, delivering various projects and outcomes, enhancing those areas throughout that time. 
and growing the habitat as well as the livestock simultaneously. Between us all is coming up with that sustainable model and sustainable method of farming with the environment over this rugged and amazing landscape to deliver this for many generations to come. Dartmoor is home to 35,000 people. Ensuring our communities thrive and the people who have grown up in them have the opportunities to continue to afford to live and work here is a key part of our thinking. Our local plan has helped shape these future development and housing opportunities. Our role at the National Park is around supporting the special qualities of the National Park and we do that by understanding and balancing the needs of people, of the environment, of the economy and we do that by working really closely with communities to bring forward development and positive change that, that supports vibrant communities in the future. And we've done that in exactly here in Chagford and in other places around the National Park. So growing up in Chagford all my life, uh, when the opportunity finally arrived for this development to take place, I was fully supported the entire way. So in the past, it's been difficult to find places to rent due to prices of local area. This new development has really opened up new opportunities for us and helped my family grow. There has been a long history of Dartmoor being used for military purposes. From the 19th century training camps for the Devon volunteers, to the use of sphagnum moss to help dress wounds in the First World War, to the live training exercises that take place for our forces today and the annual Ten Tours Expedition and Jubilee Challenge that thousands of young people train for and take part in each year. I'm a training safety officer up here in Oak Campton Camp overseeing the Dartmoor training area. Military training has evolved hugely over the years as we seek to further minimise our impact on the moor. We're proud to be part of a peat and restoration work that's going on here putting something back into the land that gives our troops the conditions they need to train in. Dharma has been used for all sorts of military training over the years, but now it's primarily used for light forces, Army, Royal Marines and RAF Regiment, conducting dismounted close combat training. A healthy moor is so important to us, there's no point our troops going overseas if we can't look after our own countryside. When national parks were created, they were seen as sanctuaries for nature as post-war building put pressure on the countryside around them. Now we see national parks as the beating heart of a wider nature and habitat recovery network that trials innovative new practices to benefit biodiversity. I've been restoring peatland on Dartmoor for three years now. This has lots of benefits. It keeps carbon in the ground, so it's good for climate change. It's also good for the water that comes out of your taps. So a really high proportion of water that's provided to customers in Devon falls as rain on Dartmoor. And by slowing it up here, we're improving the water quality. Also, the peatland restoration is absolutely crucial up here on Dartmoor. It's one of Dartmoor's biggest assets. You know, keeping the peat in the ground, keeping it wet, really important doing the restoration work. And it works for wildlife as well, for plants, for bugs, for RSPV, it works for birds. And so you've got birds like Dunlin, who are making a real comeback now uh, on the moor because of the work that's being done out there. With the ecological, climate and health emergencies we face, Dartmoor is probably more important than ever. Dartmoor is a very special place because it's got a wide range of very unique wildlife which isn't found elsewhere in the country, such as the blue ground beetle. It's got a wide range of habitats here as well, such as moorland, heathland, woodland and beautiful rivers and it's a great place to get outside and get exercise and reconnect with nature. Wherever you go on Dartmoor you will be walking in the footsteps of our ancestors among the incredible monuments they left behind. Working with volunteers, community groups and universities we are protecting this legacy and still making new discoveries that add to our understanding of them. Dartmoor National Park the area it covers is an incredibly rich landscape for archaeology. We have remains that date back tens of thousands of years, all the way up to the recent past. Just as an example, behind me you can see Haytor Quarry, which dates to the early 19th century and is the source of a lot of the uh, stone for all sorts of national monuments in London and the local area. A recent find, just as an example of the richness of, of what we have, is the Whitehorse Hill discovery which consists of a, a burial which dates to something like 1800 BC, so nearly 4,000 years old. This was in the peat and wet. 
Um, it consisted of basketry, wood, textiles and fur, all of which were preserved from when they were put in the ground nearly 4,000 years ago. Dartmoor National Park is as relevant today as it was when it was designated back in 1951. Today, we value it not only for its landscape, recreation, wildlife and archaeology, but also for its ability to store carbon and water, which can help us combat the effects of climate change and alleviate the damaging effect on communities of flooding. Looking forward, our vision is to make Dartmoor better for future generations. Climate resilient, nature rich, beautiful. Connected to the past and looking to the future. A place where people of all ages and backgrounds can live, work or visit. A place that is loved, cherished and cared for. People have shaped the landscape of Dartmoor National Park for thousands of years. And by working together, we can continue to care for and help enhance this unique landscape for generations to come.